Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Joelle Wazen. I'm a PGY4 ESIR resident at the University of Massachusetts and a member of the SIR RFS Com Committee of uh, Advocacy, Health Policy and Economics. I will be hosting tonight's webinar. Uh, tonight is the seventh session of the IR Leadership Webinar Series. Uh, our very special guest speaker tonight is Dr. Meredith Englander, who is an Associate Professor of Interventional Radiology at Albany Medical Center. Dr. Englander has had a unique career path. She worked for a few years in state government before entering medical school and then completed an internship in orthopedic surgery and a residency in radiology at Albany Medical Center before moving to Boston, where she completed a fellowship in vascular and interventional radiology at Massachusetts General Hospital. Dr. Englander is one of the founders and a former chair of the Women in IR section of SIR. She is a leader, a mentor, and an innovator in the IR field. She's actively involved in IR advocacy and health policy, and she brings in her rich experience to discuss today's topic, professionalism, your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Englander. Thanks so much, Joel. Um, I really was honored by the invitation and humbled as well. And I'll tell you, of all the, the IR talks that you'll hear over the course of your training, this one is unique. Um, you know, it's a <laughs> message that you don't hear too often, but I think that it's one that's really critical for your success as an interventional radiology. Um, other talks, yeah, other talks are going to teach you how to do IR, but hopefully this one um, will get you thinking about how the world sees you. Um, you know, listen to the message in the talk tonight and, uh, and then think about it because, you know, in so many ways, um, the way that you are perceived will lead to either open or closed doors. Um, and also how you are perceived uh, is definitely in your control. So, mm -hmm. um, I guess that's the introduction. Um, you know, I have no disclosures that are relevant to this talk or really any disclosures, but definitely everything that I say today reflects my opinion. Um, so when I uh, first was given this topic, I was kind of impressed. You know, your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. And um, you know, Monica, you, you see that actually gave, you know, sent me the email asking me to participate with this title. And I was really impressed. I was like, wow, how did she think of that? But, uh, but then I realized that, um, that it actually was uh, you know, not, not her words exactly, although I think that, um, that they are so, the words are so true. Actually, um, it was a quote from a gentleman named Zig Ziglar, mm -hmm. who was a salesman. He realized <laughs> that he had an aptitude for sales and ultimately developed his own business where he taught people how to sell. Um, and then ultimately evolved into a motivational speaker. Uh, and he had lots of things to say, and uh, I think they're all pretty th thought-provoking and, and do contain some, some truth. Uh, but I guess ultimately, you know, inspiration, you know, it's kind of, this is, this quote <laughs> is kind of the heart of what I'm gonna talk about tonight. And, uh, you know, you really can control your own destiny. So we are going to talk about professionalism. And, uh, you know, for those of you, I, know, I assume, you know, right now tonight we're going up against the democratic debate and, uh, you know, everybody's at work during the day. But last week, Marie Ivanovich was uh, giving her testimony in the impeachment hearings. And, um, you know, she basically said, you know, all I have is my reputation. And that goes for IR as well, you know, we're going to spend some time tonight talking about reputation and attitude and perception. And uh, ultimately, again, you know, this is something within your control and it's something you have to decide, you know, how it's, how you want the world to see you. So Marcus Welby was a famous TV doctor in the early seventies before my time, uh, but he was the quintessential doctor, smart, respected, admired. He could do no wrong. You know, he was the classic paternalistic doctor, but he was loved by all patients, nurses, and other physicians. Um, you know, and I think, you know, physicians, he was, I think I remember hearing at one point, he was one of the most respected people in the country, even though he was a fictional character. 
but uh, he really did epitomize what uh, professionalism is in medicine. Um, and, you know, other TV doctors, you know, I didn't want to make this a talk and show pictures of my colleagues as examples, so uh, I chose some TV doctors to talk about, and each one is a little bit different, but each one of these five physicians represents the spectrum from irreverent, cynical, goofy, um, cantankerous, serious, motivated, driven. Um, you know, they're all different people, different styles, unique personalities, uh, but each one, you know, despite their flaws, um, you know, they were all respected clinically, uh, and because, you know, above all else, they always just demonstrated an unwavering commitment to their patients. And, uh, and that, I guess, ultimately is the heart of what we do as physicians. So, um, always keeping that in mind in light of everything else that we're going to talk about tonight. So let's get back to the title of the talk. Your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. Um, you know, obviously we need to focus on being the best doctor we can be. You know, you need to read, study, practice, ask questions. As a trainee and in practice, always strive to make yourself a little bit better. Learn wherever you can. Um, you know, you want to be the best doctor you can be. Where, where are you going? Where do you see your you know, career going? Um, do you wanna be a chief or a chair? Do you wanna be president of your group? Do you wanna be the go-to person in your practice? Do you wanna be president of SIR? You know, no matter what your goals are, um, you, know, you have to have an idea of what you wanna do and, and how, how you're gonna get there. And then um, you need to work hard to achieve them. And this is the key right here, your attitude. The way, you know, and, you know, lots of different cliches and sayings, I don't even need to really come up with a talk. I can just say, you know, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Um, you know, people see who you are and how you treat other people. And this is a quote, um, you know, actually in my hospital, they put a quote of the day up on the, on the board in the IR uh, suite every, every day, someone comes up with a quote, and this was the one today, which was kind of uh, timely for me, but, uh, this is a Maya Angelou quote. Um, uh, they won't remember what you said or what you did, but they'll re always remember, and I'm paraphrasing, always remember how you made them feel. So, you know, I think the point is important. You know, how you handle yourself makes a huge difference. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, in doing some you know, trying, trying to make this a scientific talk with facts and, and figures, it was a little bit difficult, but, uh, you know, I did come across this article in the Harvard Business Review. This is a few years old now, but basically Southwest Airlines, which is, you know, an airline that I fly very frequently, you know, they came right out and said that they don't, you know, they hire for attitude. They train for skill. They will hire people. They don't care if they're, if you are necessarily qualified for the job they're hiring you for. They want people with the right attitude. Um, cause they, you know, I think being a doctor and, and being a, you know, flight attendant, perhaps maybe different skills, but I think, um, I think it's, it's a good point that, you know, if you have the, the right attitude to learn, to, um, to engage, uh, you really can do anything. And that's from the business world. So in 2005, um, Daniel Goleman wrote this book. Uh, and introduce the concept of emotional intelligence. Um, and it's pretty pretty out there right now. Most people who who talk about business or talk about you know succeeding in the work world, they say you know it's important to be intelligent, but you also have to have this emotional intelligence. You have to mm -hmm. work well with people. And and he came up with these five pillars um, of emotional intelligence that basically said people with you know high emotional quotient or eq work better in teams they're able to adjust to change they can be flexible um, they can take criticism they can express their emotions with restraint they can be resilient and optimistic compassionate um, basically they can connect well with other people build rapport and build trust and it really is essential for getting along well at work and also getting along well in every other relationship that you have. 
Um, there are 12 competencies of emotional intelligence. And, um, you know, they can be learned, which is good. <laughs> and just because you're um, good in some doesn't mean you're good in all. And, uh, you know, you can be, you know, empathic and compassionate, but that doesn't mean you know how to handle conflict. So it's important to think about all of these and, and work on them at all the time because, you know, every, you need all these skills and all these competencies are, um, you're going to need them at some point in some interaction. And if you can rise to the occasion and, and, and demonstrate that you have these, um, you know, it will definitely make your interactions with other people a lot smoother. Um, we interact with a lot of different people at work as physicians. Each one of these different relationships is important. Um, but you really shouldn't treat people differently based on who they are or what they do. And uh, we can all think of examples of, you know, physicians who are, you know, good, you know, nice to the other physicians, but don't treat the staff respectfully. Mm -hmm. Or people who are nice to their patients, but don't treat their trainees well. Um, you know, again, you know, the way, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Um, you know, people see what you're doing. They see how you treat other people. And, uh, you know, it's just important to always focus on your relationships and, you know, treat everybody with respect. You know, you know, this, you know, it's all, you know, it's so funny, all these, you know, it's all about the cliche, you know, how do you want to be treated? How would you want other people to treat people in your family? Right. And, you know, it all gets down to the basics, right? You know, your parents were right, your grandmother was right. <laughs> you know, the golden rule is, um, it applies all the time. Um, and following these, these three simple rules will really get you through a lot of interactions with other people. And, uh, it's in, you know, it's funny. I was like, this could be the whole talk right here. Um, you know, this, this is really the bread and butter of, of how we, how we treat people and, and, um, it really is you know, important that we think about, about these basics every day. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think, you know, being positive is, uh, people see that. People, um, you know, appreciate when you say yes. You know, and this was something that I learned in my training um, and as an attending, uh, you know, when people come down and ask for, you know, ask for help you know, with a case or a question, it's a lot easier to say yes and work out the details. It's a lot easier to say, yeah, I think we could try that and then realize that it couldn't be done than to just say no. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll also tell you in, as far as in, in dealing with, you know, in the suite when you're doing cases, um, if people know that you're approachable, um, it's gonna end up with better patient outcomes. Uh, if people in the room feel that they can speak up that they have a good relationship with you. Uh, if they see something that is going wrong, they'll tell you. Um, you know, you can avoid a lot of problems if people feel empowered to speak up, and they won't if uh, if they don't feel that you're going to receive them well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, try to you know always think about you know how am I coming across? Uh, am I closing doors? Am I making this difficult for other people to, to tell me uh, what's going on? Am I putting, you know, people in a compromised position because of the way I'm treating them? You know, we all have bad days. I certainly <laughs> have. <laughs> um, but, you know, you can't, you know, losing your temper as a physician is something that sometimes happens. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, if, unless you want this to be your reputation as somebody who has a bad temper, uh, you really need to recover um, from it and quickly. And, uh, you know, I think the best thing that I found is that, um, you know, if you realize that you have said something or lost your temper or been wrong in that way, it's important to call it out and acknowledge it as soon as possible. Um, 
you know, sometimes people find it difficult to mm-hmm. say, I'm sorry. Uh, but, you know, the key thing is, you know, don't make excuses, accept responsibility for your behavior, and then try to fix the damages. If you've um, demeaned somebody or called somebody out in public, it's really important that you fix that in public as well. Um, you know, if, you know, a tech or a trainee or, you know, does, does something and, um, or, a ner- you know, if somebody isn't living up to your expectations and you call them out in front of other people, you need to really go out of your way to point out that, um, that you respect them and that they're actually, you know, they are a good tech or they are a valued member of the team and, and make sure that, that you really, you know, try as hard as you can to, to make up for that because mm-hmm. uh, people will hold it against you. Um, I will tell you that as a woman, it's especially hard. You know, it's some, mm-hmm. for some reason, it's okay for men to lose their temper, but when women lose their temper, they're bitchy. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, you know it, it's one of those double standards that, that women face. Uh, but, you know, unfortunately, just, you know, realize that that's the way it is. And, you know, we're still people. And, um, you know, I don't think you should handle it any differently. But, uh, but mm-hmm. just realize that it, that it is something. And uh, if, you know, you have trouble and people aren't, you know, you know, seeing you the way you want them to see you, then you need to work at it. And, uh, you know, always reach out to other people who can help you, who know you and, you know, the sort of person that you are and the sort of person that you want to be. Um, you know, I think it's important to always, you know, think about, you know, what, you know, what was the trigger? Why did you lose your temper? Um, you know, is there something going on outside of work that puts you in a bad mood? Um, you know, try not to let it happen again. Um, but I think also building relationships is important. You know, it's harder to lose your temper when you have, you know, when it's a well-functioning team. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I always say, you know, if um, you feel supported at work uh, and working in a team, it's harder to lose your temper, you know, and also clearly communicating is essential. Misunderstandings can so easily lead to a situation where you can lose your, your temper. Um, and I'll just, you know, can think of this you know, example, you know, make sure people understand what you, what your expectations are. You know, if you say, pull that, and the person goes, oh, okay. And instead of pulling the wire, they pull the catheter. <laughs> you're going to get angry. But meanwhile, it was because you're, you weren't communicating clearly. So it was a misunderstanding, simple misunderstanding. You know, now you have to work hard to get back into that, you know, that little vessel that you struggled for 20 minutes to get into. Um, so, you know, be clear, be concise, be direct. But then also, you have to listen to other people you know, be interested when they're talking, you know, it's so easy when people are talking to let your mind wander, but, you know, really be engaged with people and hear what they have to say. Again, you know, clear communication at work will help prevent problems, which could lead to more problems. And then, you know, I put this here under communications, don't gossip. It's so, you know, we work in a close, you know, close environments. We work closely with people. Um, you know, gossip happens all the time. And mm-hmm. you know, as a physician, as a team leader, it's really important to try to not get sucked into the gossip in the department. Um, you know, to tell people you're not interested in it and they'll respect you. Um, but really, you know, I, I would just, you know, as much as you can, just try to try to stay away from that. Try to you know, keep your, um, you know, take the high road. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, building trust, is really important with the people you work with, uh, the members you train. They want to know that they have that you have their back if there's a problem, um, and, and only you have control over whether people feel that you have their back. So you know, let people know um, that you, you care about them, that you value their contribution to the team. You know, as a as a resident, you know, it's you know there are always people below you, right? There's always a medical mm-hmm. student that looks up to you. Um, you know, and then as you work, move your way up, there's junior residents, you know, at, at every stage, you know, always remember who you were and where you've come from. And, uh, you know, even, you know, when you've been in practice for 20 years, 
uh, just try to always remember, you know, that, you know, there's somebody, you know, who's looking up to you and who's learning and is afraid and, uh, you know, and just, you know, make sure that they know that you're looking out for them. Um, so I guess, you know, this was a pretty short presentation <laughs> because I think the message is pretty clear. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, who you are at work will influence your, your, your day and it'll in influence your career. Um, you know, who you are, how you treat people makes a huge difference. And uh, it doesn't always come easily for everyone. Sometimes you have to be very thoughtful about the way you treat people. But I encourage everyone to, um, to always, again, remember who you were, where you came from, and, uh, and where you want to go. Uh, you know, respect um, and treating people well uh, will come back to you uh, time and time again. So again, short presentation, but I think important and uh, you know, happy to answer any questions. Um, very important presentation, Dr. Englander. Thank you so much. That was, um, that was very inspirational. Um, so we have room for questions from the attendees. If they have any, feel free to type them in uh, in the question box. Um, I have a question for you. Um, sure. So, we live we live in a very diverse um, atmosphere. Usually, the teams come from different uh, team members come from different cultural backgrounds, um, and at the same time, you have to work as a team very tightly. How do you juggle between camaraderie and professionalism to keep everyone comfortable and at the same time, like um, like you said before, for example, take the highway? Right. Um, well, I mean. You know, I think you know we all have our own style, and you know, you work with people who have different different styles, right? Whether that's you know culturally influenced or um, you know just personality, and I think we just need to be respectful of other people and and their style, and you know whether you tend to be somebody who likes to make jokes and you're working with somebody who's serious, <laughs> um, you know, respect that and. Um, you know, I think I think that's basically gets down to the core of all human, you know, interactions is, you know, being respectful of other people, mindful of, you know, of their styles and, uh, you know, trying to find a way that, that everybody can get along. And, uh, and, you know, we're taking care of patients. So, um, you know, I think that's, that's the, the point. Right. That if cool. we all focus on our goal is uh, we can, we can get through it well. That's, um, that's very helpful. Um, my other question is, um, so you mentioned biases, um, like for example, being a woman. Um, did you feel that dealing with such biases becomes easier uh, the higher you become, the further you go into your career, as opposed to being a trainee or a medical student? We all have biases and this is innate or acquired. and just part of being a human being yeah well i think you know sometimes it's easier because i you know what you develop a thick skin and um you know not that we should i don't think that that's the solution that you just kind of get used to it but uh you don't care as much i think also once you have been in practice a while and you have a reputation people know who you are and then they don't you know, they judge you for who they know you to be, not who they mm -hmm. think you are. And, you know, that makes a big difference as well. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, it's less, you know, do I still experience bias a lot? Yes. I mean, I don't know that I feel it every day anymore, but, um, you know, I still see it all the time. And, uh, you know, now you know, sometimes I kind of joke at it. I'll call it out a lot more easily than I ever did before. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, with, you know, experience comes confidence and, um, you know, you have a lot less tolerance for that than, you know, when you're mm -hmm. younger and you're in a much more vulnerable position as a, as somebody early in their career in training. So, so it's a lot harder. Agreed. Um, let's see if we have any questions here. Um,
We have a question here. Um, did you have to take the extra mile being the head of the team when uh, things get a little bit out of control and um, you have to do problem solving if there is a misunderstanding in a team um, trying to deal with the issue professionally as the attending interventional radiologist. Can I see that? I'm just, it's a long, so one more time. <laughs> I don't see the question. Oh, sorry, I have it, I have it on, okay. on my, my own screen. Uh, Whenever there's a misunderstanding, I guess, whenever there is a misunderstanding and um, did you feel that you have to intervene as uh, the head of your department or the head of your team in order to um, to problem solve? Do you have to take the extra mile and try to understand other people even yeah. more as an attending uh, rather than being the person who is uh, lower ranking? Well, as you know, you know, as the physician leader, of, you know, you're the leader of the team. Um, you know, it is a team, and that's one of the things about interventional radiology that I really like is that you know, when you're doing a case, you know, everybody has a job to do, but we still rely on each other. But ultimately, it's the physician who is the head, and you know, sometimes you know, if you see that things aren't going well, as as the leader of the team, you know, it really is incumbent upon you to speak up and try to fix it, you know, make things better so that everybody on the team is, you know, working at the, their best of their abilities. If, if you see that there's something is derailing your teamwork um, and you don't say something, you know, you're not only doing a disservice to that individual, but mm -hmm. to everybody. And uh, yeah, it's you, know, you do you take again you take the high road as the leader. Um, you know you have the least to lose, and and uh, and everybody has has the potential to gain uh, if you intervene when you see that things aren't going well. That's a great answer. Thank you very much, Dr. Englander. Um, trying to um, see here if we have any more questions. Okay, so we have. One more question here. When you have colleagues who seem to have been reoriented away um, from, let's see, trying to open that box. From the three golden rules you mentioned, um, right. what have you done to reorient them, or have you just let it go? And this is a question from M M Mari Tanaka. Thank you, Mari. Yeah. Um, well, that's hard, right? You know, when other people aren't behaving well. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I guess, you know, fortunately, I, I can't think of a specific example where I've had to intervene or where I've really even, you know, I can't think of a specific example, but definitely if I was in a situation where, you know, I felt that, that, that there wasn't respect, you know, there somebody who was treating somebody disrespectfully, you know, I, you know, and again, at this stage of my career, I call it out and, you know, take the mm -hmm. person aside. You try to be discreet. I mean, you don't want to make anybody feel bad. Um, but you know, people need to know. And you know, if they if people are saying something or treating people in a certain way, and you know, and then you know, is it purposeful or is it you know really is they don't know? Um, you know, if uh, you point something out to them and they didn't know, they'll be very thankful to you that you pointed it out. Mm -hmm. um, and if they were treating somebody poorly intentionally and you pointed it out to them. Uh, hopefully they'll be, uh, you know, <laughs> they'll feel like maybe they need to get themselves back, you know, in, <laughs> in order, or, um, or maybe that will be revealing a little bit about who that person is, if they don't mm -hmm. be correct. correct. Mm -hmm. So, Understood. You, know, you know, there's really no, again, you don't, there's nothing to lose by you know, taking the high road and, and, you know, working towards civility and, and respect you know we're all adults <laughs> we're all professionals right. and we should all act like adults and professionals agreed agreed 
Um, so I guess we'll be concluding uh, a little bit earlier tonight. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess well, that's I, it. Know, I, really, um, I appreciate <laughs> appreciate the opportunity um, to speak to this topic. You know, as I was putting the talk together and thinking about about it, it really is true. And uh, you know, it was you know, it was it was fun to to read these articles and um, and and quotes and mm -hmm. you know and just it really rings true to me that um you know the way you treat people you know in so many ways is is so important and uh, it does reflect on on you as an individual um and it makes all the difference in the world to uh to the way the team works to the way people feel um and you know i just you know i'm glad that i had the opportunity to talk about it and uh and hopefully some people will will listen to this at some point in the future and uh <laughs> And hopefully, you know, some message will, will, you know, bring true to some people and, and hopefully make a difference. Absolutely. This is the main purpose of our uh, leadership series webinar. It's really to get people to know how to deal with the reality of our profession on a daily basis. Thank you so much for com contributing uh, to it, Dr. Englander. It was such a pleasure to have you. And uh, and hopefully we'll be meeting you soon at RSNA. Definitely looking forward to it. <laughs> For, uh, uh, yep. For attendees who uh, would like to watch the webinar later, uh, it will be posted on our YouTube channel for IR, SIR education. Um, thank you again, Dr. Elginder. My pleasure.